hard-hitting exhibition in an unexpected place. That's at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Yes, it's not a very sort of arts and culture kind of place, Davos but isn't, no. um, lots of people are obviously there trying to at attract the attention of world leaders and business leaders that are there. Now, this includes an exhibition that you mentioned, which is designed as an innovative way to get people thinking about events in Syria. It's a virtual reconstruction of uh, the aftermath of a bomb scene in Aleppo. It's incredibly immersive. And as Stephen Cowell reports, uh, it's been getting some pretty strong reactions. Syria is, of course, one of the major topics up for discussion here at the World Economic Forum. This project aims to give people an inside view of what life is like inside Syria. It's a fully immersive experience, which allows you to see inside a virtual reality recreation of a day that a tragedy happened in Syria. It's a sound and vision experience. So now I can see inside uh, Aleppo, I can see a street scene in front of me and I can hear the sounds of what happened there. The experience has been recreated using photos and other material and put together by a, a game-making platform into a, an experience which allows you to see how, how it was on that day. So the material came from multiple sources. It came from a team I had on the ground actually collecting material. It came from uh, some of the Syrian news sources, and it came from individuals who are witnesses with their cell phones. But the material was corrobor corroborated by uh, other, um, and substantiated by other sources. So these reconstructed images of a street in Aleppo have provoked extremely strong reactions from those who've seen them here in Davos, particularly from those Syrians who experienced them. I only watched about the first 15 seconds and then I had to uh, stop watching for two reasons. The first is that it was so real for me that I felt that uh, I couldn't comprehend that this is... Uh, it was very emotional. And the second reason is that I can't believe that nowadays this is the Syria that people are seeing. And it's those sort of responses that the creators of this project are hoping to get from participants here at the World Economic Forum in the hope that it will bring the crisis in Syria into sharper focus for them. Well, let's move now to your guest from today's edition of The Encore Show. You had one of Oprah Winfrey's favourite authors in the studio. Yes, that's right. Her name's Ayanna Mathis, and she's had some really stunning success with her debut novel, which is called The Twelve Tribes of Hattie. Now, this book has sold more than 250,000 copies in the United States, and it's only been out for a year. Um, it's now being translated into 16 different languages, including a French version that's out right now. So this book recounts um, just about 60 years of modern American history from the 1920s to the 1980s. And the starting point is the 1920s with a young woman who moves from Georgia in the south up to Philadelphia in the north. And this is part of the, the Great Migration um, when six million black Americans made this move from south to north, something that we don't necessarily hear about very often. Um, so it recounts the family's lives as circumstances change through the years for people in America. Like you said, Oprah Winfrey loves this novel. She personally chose it for her book club. That could explain uh, some of her success. Could explain some of her success, absolutely. And Oprah even managed to get Ayanna's publishers to bring forward their publishing date by a month to fit her schedule, which shows the power of Oprah, I think. Uh, you can watch the whole interview uh, on our show Encore at quarter past five Paris time today. For now, here's um, Ayanna telling us about how that choice by Oprah changed her life. It's, it's incredible the, the, the power that she has just because, you know, I mean, she drives sales so mm. much and is such a literary person. Mm. So she said, you know, we need to publish this six weeks early so that my publishing house <laughs> did it. <laughs> um, and of course, with the, 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 the sort of Oprah choice comes an enormous kind of media machine. Mm. And so my life, really, I make a joke that, my, that we uh, released the book on December 6th. That was when it was published and announced that it was the Oprah pick. Yeah. My life was one way on December 5th. <laughs> my life was completely different by December 7th. Well, looking to Egypt now, as we've seen in our bulletin, the country is still going through very unsettled times. So some people might be surprised that a, a film festival is taking place. Yeah, it sounds quite a sort of a frivolous, fun thing to be happening when all these terrible things are happening elsewhere in the country. But happening it is. This is the second festival of Egyptian and European film, and it's being held in the historic city of Luxor on the Nile. And it actually wraps up tomorrow. Um, its aim is to promote uh, Egyptian filmmaking and also uh, European cinema. Um, the hottest tipped film... Uh, you can see it, a little excerpt there now. Uh, this is called La Moisa, which means sorry in English. It's a film about post-revolution Egypt. It deals with cultural differences, 
between rich and poor, but also between Coptic Christians and Muslim Egyptians. Um, our reporters who are down at the festival spoke to the little boy who stars in this film. This film has changed the way I look at the problems between Christians and Muslims in our society. Before, I thought that only existed on the television. Some surprises from the arts world now. Yes, that's right. I'm going to get much more frivolous now uh, with this section. Uh, this is the Chinese sculptor called Li Hongbu, and he makes very classical looking busts and statues, as you can see there. But when you actually take hold of the sculpture, it turns into a lovely paper concertina in it your hands. It's really odd. Isn't it? It's like the brains are coming <laughs> oh, out. I like that one. <laughs> now, up to 30,000 pieces of paper go into each of these. Um, and he, he glues them all together in a big block. And then he actually saws them with a circular saw to make the, uh, to make the sculpt, sculpture and the busts. Um, so you see him there polishing them off. That's incredible. Isn't it funny? It is like he's sort of pulling a real person's head from their shoulders. Now, Lee Hongbo is actually a book editor and designer in his normal job. So perhaps explains his love of paper. Um, now, he's currently exhibiting his work in New York and he says he's very much enjoying seeing people's reactions. People say it's strange because for them, the human body and therefore representations of it can't be stretched out. I want to change this vision. And let's finish up with some French art then. Yes, this is one for lovers of fairy tales, fantasy and mythology. The artist Gérard Garoust is exhibiting a collection of his uh, paintings that deal with these themes. Now, he's a very interesting artist. He's got some very high profile fans here in France. His works hang on the walls of Presidential Palace, uh, the National Library, among other buildings. And we're going to end up with a little montage of some of his latest exhibition, which is at the Galerie Templon here in Paris. I like the choice of music for that one. <laughs> wacky stuff all round, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. <laughs> Catherine Nicholson, thank you very much for that wacky arts update. And it's time now for the latest sports news. And we're starting that with an update on injury.